Herflow 1.2 is out and it's quite a big update because it now fully supports mesh deformations. It has also better collisions and some new features like hair interpolation. For all new people, Hairflow is an add-on to directly simulate geo hair or hair cuts in general, without the need of any proxy meshes or whatever. It means it can simulate it natively, so you can also make changes of the hair in real time and yeah, whatever you want. So if you are interested, then you can check out the product page. And now let's go. First of all, make sure that you update to the latest version of Hairflow, which is 1.2 and that you also exchange the additional blend file and set the path to the new file here, which is also marked with 1.2. The first big improvement is that the add-on don't have to apply the scale and rotation of the hair and the parent object anymore, because that caused some issues with the appearance of the hair for some people. So like here, the head is rotated with 90 degrees and scaled with 0.1, and the hair is also rotated with minus 90 degrees. And if I now go to hair flow and add the simulation, then as you can see, the alignment of the hair is still correct. So I can just press on play and move it and everything works normally. And this is because of the new transform corrections you can find here. And normally you don't have to do anything because the add-on automatically sets the right parameters when you add the simulation. But if something shouldn't fit, then you can also adjust it here manually like this. Then we come to the collision function and here we also have big improvements in comparison to the older versions. So like here, if I select the sphere for example and move it a bit, then as you can see, it's now way more precise and we don't have any jittering now, even if the collision reactivity is set to 1. So normally you can set the collision reactivity to something like 0 0.9 and 1. If you notice little bumps in the hair, then you can go up and down and as you can see, then yeah, it's now corrected. And now we also have a slider for the collision margin for further fine tuning. So like here, if I crank this a bit up, then yeah, it's now perfect. And last but not least, we also have a collision boost here. And you need this only if the collision reactivity isn't enough and especially for faster movements, this setting can be very helpful. So just to show you, now it's set to zero and if I move it, then as you can see, the hair reacts quite good. But if I set it to one for now, then yeah, the hair reacts even more. So you have to be a bit careful that the hair doesn't overreact. So don't set it too high or sometimes you maybe even want something exactly like that. And you also have the same settings for an extra collision object you can set here. The gravity is also improved because in previous versions it had some problems if the head rotation was too strong or the person is upside down and now it always works correctly. So like here, if I crank this up and then rotate it, as you can see, it now always points down. So I have to crank up the affected length here and stiffness. But yeah, it's always correct now. And of course, you can also here select the head, the collision object. And yeah, then it works perfectly. Then we also have an additional force correction for the radial force now. So if I activate it and make it a bit stronger, I can also adjust here how I want it. Furthermore, we have now an improved and way more powerful proxy function. It's now also in an extra section. And if I activate it here, we first have the amount slider, you already know, but it's now way more precise and the hair distribution is much more even than it was before. We also have the ability to activate the original radius. So you can choose if you want to set the radius manually or if you just want to take over the original radius. The next thing is it now also supports hair interpolation. And that means you can just crank this up here and get more hairs, but the simulation will only calculate the original hairs. And so you can get much faster calculations and way smaller baking files, but still have the same amount of hairs. And you can also directly control the distance of the interpolation or the distribution shape or the tip roundness or even the seed, like this. 
So you can now use the proxy function even for final renderings if you want. Just be aware of that if you make the interpolation too high, then at some point you will notice that the hairs are duplicated, but in many cases it works quite good. And the best comes at last, Hairflow now fully supports surface deformations. And that means as long as you have something like a surface deform modifier before the hair simulation modifier, which is added by default if you add something like four, then it is able to calculate the physics accordingly to the deformations of the mesh. So as the target, you have to select the mesh to which the surface deformation modifier is binded to. And then we click on add. And now you are maybe wondering why the hair is gone. And this is because the add-on has set the transform settings accordingly to the armature because the mesh is binded to it. And yeah, the armature has these settings here but in this case, we have to set the settings accordingly to the mesh. So we go to hair flow and select curves. And here under uh, transform corrections, we set it to zero and one again. And here it is. And then we can just click on play. And as you can see, it now calculates the physics accordingly to the movement. And we can also select the collision object here, the human, and also crank the stiffness a bit up. And here we go. I'm so happy that it finally works and I hope you like the changes as much as I. And then I see you next time.